Okay, so today I will present the work about enterprise risk management that we're doing in Timbus project. So we'll talk about generally about enterprise risk. So it's a very sort of foundation type of course, yeah, module. So just giving some very general knowledge about these things. So talking about enterprise risk management and the various risk management frameworks that we analyzed to come up with some one that we could adopt for the Timbus project. And then I'll talk about various risk management phases that are you know, part of the standard that we are following within Timbus project, and then comparison and assessment of risk management frameworks. And then in the end of my presentation, I'll talk about risk management specifically we are doing in the project Timbus. So that's more about you know, business process-centric risk management approach and very much centric about taking DP as one risk mitigation strategy. Okay, so the aim of enterprise risk management is basically to provide preservation and control mechanisms to deal with risk that are connected to your business activities or assets in your organizations. So we define risk as something undesirable outcome posing a threat to the organization and organization's ability to achieve goals. So here, here we, we, we could talk about financial risk, uh, like you know we have cash flows, credits, market risk, and then we could talk about various operational risk, like we're talking about IT risk, process risk, and risk from external events, like you know if some I don't know some flood happens somewhere and how it is affecting your supply chain, so these type of things. So here in the Timbus project, we are following up what is called enterprise-wide approach to risk management. So we are not really just going into an organization and looking into some specific location or some particular organizational unit and doing risk management. It's really looking from the business process perspective. Business process, when you talk about business process, then they are really, you know, sort of distributed, you know, going through different organizational units. So they are really sort of scattered around many different organizational units. So essentially, we are breaking up the risk silos and looking really from you know taking business process as a whole thing. So this slide shows some of the risk management frameworks that we looked into, analyzed, and we basically we're trying to find out which is the one that we should adopt in the Timbus project for you know. Uh, and the reason that in Timbus project we have different type of use cases. Basically, we have sort of customers that have come up with different use cases. For example, one use case is related to civil structures. So here we are talking about some very big structures like dams, which need to be continuously monitored. We have to look into the risk, and then we have to see, you know, what are the risk mitigation strategies in that context. Another use case was from e-science, where we are looking into, you know, experiments like CERN in Switzerland, where you know we we have very expensive experiments running, huge amount of data is generated and then we have to analyze data and come up with some results and then also use case from SAP itself which was very much you know some business process from ERP from business suite of SAP so the idea was to look into you know all these various frameworks from the generic risk management frameworks project management frameworks and IT governance risk frameworks and to find out you know which one is the best optimal one for our usage in the project and in the end we decided for ISO 31000 and the reason was as you can see in the table we look from the into these frameworks from the principles and features perspective for example you know different features that we have basically written over here and then we looked into how they are supported in these different frameworks if they are partially supported fully supported and if they you know basically fit to our needs and in the end as i said then we adopted for iso 9 iso iso 31000 standard this slide now shows ISO 31000 standard and how do we do risk management in the perspective of this standard. So essentially we start with the process, for, process of first establishing context. I will you know, go through each of these stages in the coming slides. Then we do risk identification, then we are talking about, then we are doing risk analysis, and then we are doing risk evaluation, which is basically risk analysis and then looking at if it is still you know, relevant for the organizational risk perspective and then doing risk treatment and then in the end risk monitoring which is again when we have some risk um, treatment done we are, then we are still continuously monitoring basically and looking into if you know this because businesses are very dynamic things are changing very quickly and so we have to continuously monitor and do risk management in sort of cyclic fashion Okay, the first step is in risk management according to ISO 31000 standard is uh, defining the context, which means basically looking into parameters that are relevant for, you know, for the particular organization we are looking into. So external parameters where we are looking into external, for example, stakeholders, 
legal or compliance you know, regulations that affect the organization. Then we are talking about internal parameters. Here we are looking into organizational objectives, the organizational structure, you know, the different processes that are running within the organization, information systems, and the culture of the organization. And then we do definition of risk attributes and measurement approaches units. So we are talking here about financial impact of you know the risk that we'll be looking into. Then secondary impacts. Some of the risks they don't have you know direct impact, but they might have you know some secondary indirect impacts. Then probability or likelihood of occurrences or so risk. You know how often do they occur in an organization? For example, if you think about earthquake in Japan, how often do they occur there? You know, if you have some part of the business in Japan. And then essentially in the end we do risk classes. So risk identification is basically a process of finding and documenting the risk which are basically relevant for your organization. So aim is to identify what might happen and that might affect the achievement of organizational goals and objectives. So different techniques are employed for identifying risk, and I will give you some information in the next slide. So here we are talking about, for example, doing brainstorming questionnaires where we just you know, build up some questionnaires and go to our customers, and they can fill up these questionnaires, and then we have the information about risk that are you know, connected to their businesses. Then risk assessment workshops where we are sitting like you know with a couple of people like you guys here, and then we just you know have some again you know some talks and we try to identify the risk associated with some particular domain, and then of course auditing and inspections where we have for example some external auditors they are coming in and looking into our businesses and basically helping us also you know identifying our risks. So taxonomies can be helpful basically to identify vulnerabilities and threats for categorizing risk. So when we talk about vulnerabilities, we are talking about process, data, and IT infrastructure. So process, we mean you know what could be the software force that can happen in an organization. Software obsolescence that is very relevant for Timbus. You know, if software you know is going to be obsolescent, then we need to look into some you know if our business process still needs that process or software, then we need to look into DP strategies basically to make sure that after 10 years we still have that up and running. Then data, we look into media faults, media obsolescence. Then infrastructure, then we are talking about hardware faults, hardware obsolescence, communication faults, network service failures, and then below you see the threats. So these are basically generalized threats, for example, disasters. We have floods, we have earthquakes. How do they impact you know, our supply chains of our businesses? So you know, recently there were very heavy floods in Thailand and they really affected the supply chains of many automobile industry in Japan, and they were really unable to deliver their cars in time. Then we're talking about attacks, like terrorist attacks, 11 September, you know, how do they impact you know, your businesses, and also some internal attacks, you know, some, I don't know, some security related, or some, you know, I don't know, yeah, some hacking thing, these type of things. Then management, so economic failures of the companies or organizations themselves organizational failures, and then legislation. So many of the businesses are basically regulated by very stringent policies, legalities, frameworks, yeah. So here we're looking into that, and what are the legal requirements coming from that perspective?